Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at the information you can get from graphs involving concentration, temperature and surface area. I'm going to start off with a graph looking at the volume of a gas produced when I have a low concentration of reactants. So as you can see here, I've got the volume on the left hand side going up and I've got the time along the bottom. Now as with any graph, the steepest part is where the rate is the fastest. And when it comes to reaction graphs, when it becomes flat, it means the reaction is finished. All of, at least one of the reactants has been used up. And when the graph starts to shallow, starts to become less steep, the reaction is slowing. Therefore, you have a lower rate of reaction there. That's because you have less reactants and more products. So there are less reactions going on. What you might be asked is to adapt your graph though to say what happens if the concentration increases. And nice and simply, you should remember now that if you increase the concentration, the rate of reaction goes up. Therefore, your graph is going to be steeper. It's important to note, however, that if you increase the concentration of, say, the acid, but keep the marble chips the same, the reaction will always finish at the same point when that marble chip has been used up. Therefore, the flat part of the graph will always stay exactly the same volume. So let's have a look at a graph looking at surface area. So here I've got one with a high surface area and it might ask you in exam to sketch a graph to show a low surface area. Now if it's a low surface area, therefore it means that there are going to be less collisions per second, therefore the rate of reaction is going to be lower. If it's lower, then the curve is going to be shallower, it's not going to be as steep. And again, it will end at the same point. So in general, if you're asked to show what a graph would look like if you increase the temperature, concentration or surface area, make sure it's steeper and make sure it finishes at the same point. And similarly, if you're asked to show decreasing the concentration, temperature and surface area, make it shallower, make the gradient less steep. Here is another example of a graph that you can get in, in the exam, which is the mass of the reactant over time. Now, as you can see here, it's steeper at the start again, so I've got a faster rate of reaction at the start, and then the reaction is finished where it's gone flat. And again, the reaction rate is slowing as you go along. Again, if you increase the concentration, surface area or temperature, it'll become a steeper graph. So it'll look like this, again, finishing at the same point, and this is exactly the same for concentration graphs as well. Uh, all they need to do is change the axis on the left from mass to concentration. The concentration of the products will increase and the concentration of the reactants will decrease, as you can see from my little graphs on the right hand side. Now, there is one final thing, which is the trickiest thing that you guys are going to have to come across in terms of these graphs, which is calculating the rate. As you can see here, the calculation you need to work out the rate is to take the amount of reactant used or the amount of product formed and divide it by the time it takes. Now, that's nice and easy if you have a line graph, but if it's a curved graph like this, it becomes a little bit more complicated. So for example, if you're given a question saying, what is the rate at 15 seconds? The first thing you need to do is draw a tangent line. So go up by 15 seconds and go up to where that meets your curve and then draw a line meeting on that point. Once you've done that, draw a line across and up to make a triangle, as you can see here. Now your next step is to figure out what the values are on your bottom and your side of your triangle. So if I start off at the bottom, I've got 1.5 squares, and each square is worth 6 seconds, therefore I've got 1.5 times by 6, which is 9 seconds. Now in that 9 seconds, how much have I produced? Well I've got 3.3 squares approximately. If I've got 3.3 squares, each square is worth 2 centimetres cubed, Therefore, I've got about 6.5 centimetres cubed of gas produced. 
Now, as I've said, to work out the rate, all you have to do is take the height divided by base, which in this case is the volume divided by time. So it's going to be 6.5 divided by 9, which is 0.72 centimeters cubed per second. Now that is quite tricky. What I'd suggest is have a look at this graph, maybe try and do it for a few different areas before you move on to the apply question, which is coming up next. Okay, I've got a couple of questions I'd like you to have a go at. Number one, it says, describe the trend in the concentration of the products. So start off by telling me what happens as the time goes up to the concentration. Then use data to get your second point. So use information from the graph, the data from it, what's happening at the steepest point, what's happening here, and what happens at the end. Use data to prove what that trend is. Number two, it says draw a sketch of what the graph would look like if you increase the temperature of the reaction. So is it going to be steeper, like that? Is it going to be shallower, like that? And where is it going to end? You get one mark for each of those bits. And then finally, calculate the rate at 20 seconds in meters per second. So when it says 20 seconds, you have to find 20 seconds on the graph, go all the way up here and draw your tangent. And then remember, pick some values off, find out what that distance is, what that distance is, and divide height by base, and that will give you your gradient. Have a go at it, and we'll see how you've done shortly. Okay, question one says, describe the trend shown in the graph. So you want to start off with the general trend, which is it's increasing. Now, you're going to need to pull some data from it. So what you could do is turn around and say between 0 and 10 seconds, it's increased rapidly. Or you could say it's a steep gradient. You could say after 10 seconds, so from here onwards, it starts to slow down. So the gradient decreases and the reaction finishes at 60 seconds. Between 50 and 60, so maybe actually 52. So to get your marks here, your first mark is for the general trend, saying it's increasing. And then your second mark is going to be for picking some data from the graph, saying it's increased rapidly between 0 and 10 seconds. It slows down between 20 and 52 seconds, and then 60 seconds, it stops. Okay, on to question two then. So this one says to sketch the graph to show it increasing the temperature. So you should remember if you increase it, it becomes steeper. So I'm going to add in a gradient here, and then it should always finish at the same point, like that there. So you're going to get your first mark, for having a steeper gradient, and your second mark for the end point being the same. Okay, so question three says, work out the rate of reaction at 20 seconds. So the first thing you need to do is to draw your tangent line. And that needs to be somewhere that meets along flat at 20 seconds. So I'm gonna draw a line there. <clears throat> the next thing to do is I'm going to make it my triangle. So I'm going to go along here, make sure that's straight, and then I'm going to go up to there. So I can then work out my base and my height. So I've got one, two, three, four, five squares at the bottom. Each square is worth two seconds. So five times two is 10 seconds. And then going up my height, I've got one, two, three squares. Each square is worth 0 0.2, so that is 0 0.6 molar. Now, to work out the rate, which is molar per second, that should give you a clue, so it's moles per second, so it's going to be 0 0.6 divided by 10, which is going to give me 0 0.06 molar 
per second. So you will get one mark for having your tangent line drawn correctly, one mark for picking out information correctly, and one mark for having approximately 0 0.06 molar per second. Don't worry about the units for this one, but I would get into a habit of putting them in there. But because it gave you it in the question, you usually don't get marks for it. The examiner in this would have accepted anywhere between 0 0.07 and 0 0.05 to allow for error in your readings. That is everything in this video then. There are a couple of review questions for you. Number one being sketch the trend in the concentration of the reactants. So this is the same graph over here. This is your products. What would the reactants look like? So it's going to start off high and it's going to decrease finish the graph off. Number two, draw a sketch of what the graph would look like if you decrease the temperature of the reaction. So that's just the opposite of what we did for the apply question. And then calculate the rate at 10 seconds, which is down here. Again, doing exactly the same as we did before. That brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, click on like down below. You can have a look at the latest video. You can visit the website and you can also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye now.